Shit, Barda! Twelve scariest video game villains. A terrifying central villain goes a long way toward improving a horror survival game. A tale is only as good as its villain, according to an age-old proverb that also applies to video games. Many games are improved and enhanced by the introduction of famous and renowned antagonists. The finest video game villains are complex characters who serve as superb foils to their respective heroes. They have depth, passion, and nefarious schemes behind their sleeves. They're villains, whether they're otherworldly aliens, cold-hearted machines, or just deranged individuals who have lost all compassion. The finest video game villains create an indelible impression on you and remain in your mind long after they've been defeated. If your favorite nemesis isn't on the list, let us know in the comments how cruel our omission is. So, without dilly-dallying, here we look at some of the most terrifying villains in video game history. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. Nemesis, Resident Evil 3 Remake Mr. X from Resident Evil 2 was tweaked up to 100 and made into Nemesis in Resident Evil 3. Throughout the game, Nemesis follows you around. You won't be able to kill him, and you won't be able to stop him. You can only run away at best, and even that isn't always effective. The 2020 remake of Nemesis emphasizes the beast's he's everywhere nature even more. Not only does he appear out of nowhere, but he has also modified his moves so he can sprint, leap, and smash through barriers. The monster outweighs a standard human and has substantially greater intelligence and physical skill than its undead counterparts. Although being smaller than other tyrant forms, it first appears as the titular primary villain in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis before appearing in future games and cameo roles. The Nemesis T-types were created by Umbrella Europe's Number 6 Laboratory as the climax of the Nemesis project, with the successful implantation of NE parasites into T-103 hosts, giving Umbrella a highly intelligent and strong monster. Although several Nemesis T-types were built, only one, the Nemesis T-02, is known to have seen battle and was sent to Raccoon City and received the nickname The Pursuer. Did I mention its weapon of choice is a rocket launcher? Scarlet Boss, Silent Hill Homecoming Scarlet is a terrifying monster that first appears as a boss character in Silent Hill Homecoming's Hell Descent, Martin Fitch's Hell. Dr. Martin Fitch's memories of his daughter Scarlet Fitch, whom he murdered as part of a covenant made by the founding families, have manifested in this terrible and vindictive beast. The Scarlet is a massive creature with porcelain skin that resembles a big doll. She possesses long clawed hands and razor sharp fangs in her jaws that could easily bite off a human skull. Her eyes are closed and she is wearing ballerina shoes. When Alex Shepard discovers Martin Fitch kneeling inside Hell's Descent, Martin Fitch's particular Hell Scarlet emerges. Alex offers him a doll that belonged to Scarlet after a long chat. Scarlet's doll. Dr. Fitch begins to bleed profusely from all of his wounds, dropping the doll into a pool of blood. Scarlet's memories come to life, prompting her to emerge from Dr. Fitch's pool of blood. Scarlet takes him in her arms and begs her pardon. The monster chews off the doctor's head and directs her rage onto Alex after a brief consideration. Alex is forced to confront the monster manifestation of Scarlet Fitch because he has no other option. Pyramid Head, Silent Hill 2. For years, Pyramid Head has scared game audiences and Silent Hill enthusiasts alike. The franchise might be put on hold for the time being, which is wonderful news for gamers who have been traumatized by the game and Pyramid Head. Pyramid Head, a depiction of the protagonist's damaged mind, appears throughout Silent Hill 2, and his mere sight is enough to send shivers down players' spines. Pyramid Head, often known as the Red Pyramid Thing, 
is a humanoid creature from the Silent Hill franchise that originally appeared in Silent Hill 2. His crimson helmet and butcher's robes harken back to the town's ancient executioners who revered Valtiel, the Angel of Rebirth. He exists to keep James Sunderland human and help him recall his previous crimes. He is a manifestation of James Sunderland's remorse and need for punishment. The Great Knife and the Great Spear, tools of James's inner suffering, are wielded by the monster. A second Pyramid Head appears at the conclusion of the game. Pyramid Head has been one of the most well-known and iconic monsters in the genre, transforming into a popular and flagship symbol for the series since its inception. Pyramid Head's primary appearances, aside from Silent Hill 2 and Homecoming, have been in the spin-offs Silent Hill the Arcade and Silent Hill Book of Memories, with cameos in Silent Hill Origins and Silent Hill Downpour. They also appear in the Silent Hill movie and Silent Hill Revelation, as well as the Silent Hill comics, the novel Silent Hill Betrayal, and the Silent Hill Packaslot. Pyramid Head may have the creepiest appearance in the game, but he has the strength to back up his menacing appearance. The psychological consequences of James Sunderland's hideous looks and despicable behavior are grave. <laughs> The Last of Us 2. This diseased oddity, named the Rat King in The Last of Us Part 2, is a superorganism made up of numerous stalkers, clickers, and a bloater that have been linked together by the Cordyceps fungus. The Rat King has immense strength and durability, far beyond that of a bloater, as seen by its ability to effortlessly smash through and demolish most of the lower floors of the hospital, including an ambulance, and its ability to take significant damage before dying. Some of the interwoven infected can break free from the bigger mass after absorbing enough harm. After an infected person has separated, it may exhibit characteristics common to other forms of infection. For example, one disconnected infected resembled a stalker in behavior and look, but could throw mycotoxin sacks like bloaters. It looks like each and every infected one connected to the mass is its own creature, rather than the mass as a whole. The Rat King is made up of some of the first persons in Seattle to be infected with cordyceps, brain illness, meaning the sickness took 25 years to mature into this stage. It appears to have originated by being locked in a chamber so densely populated with spores that the sick blended into one another as the fungal growths flowered and spread. The only recorded example of conjoined infected is a Rat King discovered in the basement of a Seattle hospital. The Rat King is the most powerful infected, and as such, it can withstand massive amounts of harm. To deliver enormous damage to this infected swiftly, the player should save explosives, flamethrower ammo, and incendiary bullets. Because the Rat King can charge through all forms of attacks, including fire assaults, the player needs to flee often and preserve a safe distance. If the player does not flee, the Rat King will either corrode Abby's skin with mycotoxin and emit it like shamblers do, or seize her and break her neck and brutally pull off her limbs. Have mercy upon us. Ludwig the Accursed, the Holy Blade, Bloodborne. Ludwig the Accursed is a boss in Bloodborne's The Old Hunter's expansion. He was also the first hunter of the church and the creator of the Healing Church Workshop. Ludwig the Holy Blade is his formal title, which he assumes in the second portion of his combat. His lower body is frail and flayed, with four asymmetrical, yet powerful hoofed legs, while his upper torso is a depiction of insanity. A disproportionate hunch protrudes between two long arms with large, sharp talons, revealing a circular maw lined inside with anomalous teeth and clusters of eyes, and his face, supposedly blind from the right eye, is a melted visage of leathery skin and crooked teeth, extended over an elongated head, vaguely resembling that of a horse. Ludwig is vulnerable to bolt, fire, and arcane in his initial phase. His arcane defense doubles in his second phase, from 12% to 25%. Players with a passive playable can instead get the Simon's Bowblade early. 
then call an NPC hunter to tank and safely deal with Ludwig from afar. This strategy is effective in both phases. Ludwig was the first of a slew of healing church bounty hunters, many of whom were priests, clerics as it was, mutated into the most heinous creatures. The healing church developed its own core of hunters under Ludwig's direction. Ludwig educated his hunters to be noble Spartans, as well as regular Yarnamites, successfully unifying the population and utilizing it to confront the plague. Ludwig eventually succumbed to his bloodlust and evolved into a terrifying beast, a horrific mix of horse, wolf, and man. He was stuck at the hunter's nightmare, and the blood had totally consumed him. He lived in the underground corpse pile, where he created the Nightmare's Blood River by slaughtering countless monsters and hunters in a fit of wrath. <laughs> Baby, Resident Evil Village. The Baby is a minor opponent in Resident Evil Village, a horror game released in 2021. It's a huge, hideous, humanoid creature that stalks and tries to consume the main character. It is possible that it is under Donna Beneviento's command, or that it is a fatal illusion made by Donna Beneviento, who is stalking Ethan Winters around Donna's house. The baby, as its name suggests, has many of the same features as a human newborn. This monster not only has certain physical characteristics with you, but it also communicates in a similar manner. It will frequently say Mama and Dada throughout its chase of Ethan. The baby, like other newborns, will put things in its mouth that it shouldn't, such as Ethan when he gets too close, and will exclaim yummy while doing so. <laughs> while staying at Donna's house, Ethan became ill from Donna's mold-infected plants and began to have hallucinations. This suggests that the baby is only a figment of the imagination. If that's the case, it may be a representation of Ethan's underlying anxieties about his daughter. The baby resembles a deformed fetus rather than a conventional human baby. It has two massive black beady eyes, a balding head, and a colossal slobbering toothless mouth that extends the length of its neck. Its skin is a combination of brown and red, as if it had recently been born. It walks on all fours, its hands performing the majority of the effort while its feet are bent backwards. Its primary body is flat and facing the floor, and it moves on all fours. While Ethan is attempting to locate the break box key, the baby will arrive at the end of a corridor leading to the doll workshop. The pursuit will then commence with Ethan, who will be forced to flee inside the kitchen. After Ethan acquires a fuse, the baby will emerge and follow Ethan through the kitchen and bedroom, only for Ethan to escape once he reaches the medicine room. Ethan won't see the baby again until he gets to the elevator. Before the baby reaches him, he must successfully close the gates. The baby will scream at him as he flees in the elevator after he has done so. Goosebumps, right? Laura Creature, the evil within, Laura, a warped reincarnation of Laura Victoriano, is a recurrent opponent in The Evil Within and The Evil Within 2. When it comes to the adversaries that the player must fight, The Evil Within is rich with symbolism. As a result, the game's secondary enemy, Laura, an amorphous beast with claws and hair, is more than just a throwaway character based on classic Japanese horror films. The inspiration for the design may be traced back to Ruvik's upbringing when the villain conjured a furious facsimile of his sister to seek vengeance for her unjust death. She is practically bulletproof, although she responds strongly to open flames, an allusion to the barn fire that severely damaged Laura and left her in a vegetative condition, eventually leading to her death. Laura's reborn form has discolored and spotty mottled skin, most likely as a result of the fire. Laura's incessant screams might be a result of Ruvik's final recollection of her screaming in agony as she was burnt. Laura travels slowly, but she can teleport small distances to keep up with Sebastian. Thus, the player must stay on the go at all times. Certain things, like shutter doors, can be closed to temporarily slow her down. She may spawn from any dead body on the ground. However, she likes those near Sebastian. It is feasible to fight Laura with traditional weapons, but her enormous health combined with her habit of teleporting about when attacked makes her a huge resource drain. Come see her gift. Look at all the pretties my little girl has given me! 
Kiss me, lover! Marguerite Baker, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Marguerite Baker was a member of the Baker Ranch, a home near Dulvey, Louisiana, where she lived. In Resident Evil 7, Biohazard, she is a significant adversary. She and her family are to blame for the kidnappings of numerous innocent individuals and their subsequent transformation into terrifying creatures known as the Molded. Marguerite resided in Louisiana with her husband Jack and their children, Lucas and Zoe, before changing. However, the entire family was afflicted with a fungus that attacked their brains, rendering them mad but also offering them extraordinary endurance and the capacity to heal from severe wounds. The family vanished from the public eye in 2014, and their home was considered to be abandoned and later haunted. In reality, the family was still alive and well, abducting and experimenting on helpless victims in order to transform them into monstrosities with comparable powers but far less intelligence. She was formerly a kind, devoted, obedient, and conventional elderly housewife who got warped as Evelyn's gift twisted her, turning her into a crazed and psychotic shell of her former self. Even before she was infected by Evelyn's gift, she hinted at her previous nature, telling Zoe to come out of hiding in an extremely empathetic, gentle manner to meet Evelyn, and she will noticeably hesitate to harm Zoe, even fighting off Evelyn's control long enough for Marguerite to give Zoe a key to the family car so the latter can seek help. Marguerite tried to treat her guests with respect, but she simply served them terrible food and Evelyn's corrupting gift as meals. Marguerite, like all the molded, had the capacity to repair wounds and severe limbs with ease, to the point where her regeneration was so powerful that she was practically eternal. Her power to transform her body into a bug-like shape with long, slender limbs has also been granted to her as a result of being molded. In contrast to Jack, who was sluggish but persistent, Marguerite charges towards Ethan or Mia if she spots either of them, although she is not as vigilant as Jack, enabling her victims to hide underground to avoid being detected. She, like Jack, does not make her presence known all of the time, and instead goes about the estate silently until she sees one of the intruders. The Wendigo, Until Dawn The Wendigos are the main adversaries of the video game Until Dawn, which was released in 2015. The Wendigo are people that have been possessed and turned by the Native American spirit of the same name as a result of cannibalism while on Blackwood Mountain because of an old curse set on the mountain. Hannah Washington is the most well-known of these Wendigos, having turned after being forced to eat her sister Beth when abandoned in the mines. The Wendigo are easily identified by their gaunt bodies, spider-like limbs, and ragged pale skin. They are rarely seen until they decide to strike. They are capable of extraordinary bursts of speed and can keep up with or even surpass their opponents without tiring because of their motion-sensitive eyesight, which allows them to zero in on fleeing victims. Despite their weak look, Wendigos have shown remarkable physical strength and durability, surviving a high-caliber rifle shot to the head and crushing a human skull with their bare hands. They appear to prefer harsh, purposeful means of murdering their prey, such as impaling them on hooks, gouging out their eyes, or even cutting their mouths off, implying that Wendigos are sadistic rather than just animalistic murderers. The Wendigos' curse, according to the Stranger's Chronicle, began on Blackwood Mountain itself. Blackwood Mountain was revered as holy territory by the Cree tribes in the region who refused to kill animals or destroy the mountain in any manner for fear of disturbing the spirits that lived there. Unfortunately, prospectors surveying the mountain in 1891 discovered a tin and radium-rich region, and their excavations awoke the first of the Wendigo spirits, unleashing their curse on the surrounding area. Despite their bestial nature, the Wendigo retain a sliver of human intelligence, allowing them to outwit or outmaneuver their target on occasion. Necromorph The Tormentor Dead Space 2 The Tormentor was a massive necromorph with extended arms and a long, thin torso. 
The only known specimen was discovered on Titan Station in Dead Space 2. The necromorph was largely made of hardened bone material similar to that of a brute, which served as a robust armor that could withstand even the most powerful weaponry. The necromorph's head, which was produced from the head of a single human victim, was at the end of a flexible neck. A pair of mandibles protruded from either side of the face, and the top jaw grew into by a fanged mouth. Necromorphs are deformed corpses that have been molded into terrifying new shapes, hybrid alien virus developed from a genetic code carved into the marker skin. The resultant monsters are ferocious and will attack any uninfected organism they come across. All necromorphs have one goal, to obtain new victims in order to convert and spread the illness. Some think they are the heralds of humanity's ascent, yet they are the highly harmful effect of exposure to the enigmatic gadgets known as as the markers on a more practical level. The Tormentor's four limbs are made of bright yellow tissue at the shoulder joint and are exceptionally lengthy. This tissue was a weak area, and if it received enough injury, it would explode, cutting the limb. The body's rest was a serpentine, twisted jumble of bone pieces and rotting tissue. The Tormentor has two little legs in the center of his torso that provide additional support for his weight. Surprisingly, the Tormentor only has one arm with a weak spot filled with yellow tissue. Normally, both limbs are joined by this sort of flesh, but the Tormentor is an exception in this regard. And if you find her, if... The girl will die to see you, handsome knight. <laughs> the Crones, The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. The Crones, commonly known as the Ladies of the Wood, are a trio of witches that reside in a cabin in Velen's Marshes. The three are said to be sisters and daughters of the original Lady of the Wood, also known as She Who Knows, according to legend. Bruis Weaves and the Wispus are their names. They converse most of the time through a magical tapestry and a medium, an old woman named Gran, who also appears to be their slave or at least is in some manner tied to them. The Crones are the major adversaries of The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt's Velen storyline. They are terrifying, eternal witches that stalk the marshes of Velen, inspired by the Baba Yaga and Shakespeare's weird sisters. Gerald and Kiri both meet the Ladies of the Wood in the game. Legend has it that these three sisters are the daughters of the Lady of the Wood, and they make a terrifying face. Despite the fact that the Witcher's world is filled with sorcery and magic, these crones tend to resemble cliched images of classical witches who feed on children to stay young. The power they wield is vast, and few people in the world comprehend its nature or depths, but they are revered as goddesses in Velen. Their exact identities are unknown, yet the benefits they bestow are as plentiful as their curses are gloomy. Weavis, the eldest of the three daughters, was the youngest. Wispus, the eldest of the sisters, got her name after a knight with a black heart burnt her alive in her cave in Tucson. The knight went insane after killing her and murdered himself, claiming he was plagued by a strange voice whispering in his ear that only he could hear. Bruis, the middle sister, got her name from her love of making magical concoctions, mixes, and potions. She was also reported to have devised over a hundred human soup recipes. After reading The Ladies of the Wood, a book in Geralt's possession, the player heads to Velen's wetlands to look for further traces of Kiri. The narrative revolves around three witches who grant wishes to people who bring children to their shrine. And while the story does not specify what happens to these children, the implications are terrible. Brain of Mensis, Bloodborne. The healing church worships eldritch creatures known as the Great Ones. The Brain of Mensis is a Great One in Bloodborne. It's a giant brain-like creature with a long, twisted arm that culminates in a hideous clawed hand and it's covered with eyeballs. It is for this reason that the hunter is given frenzy when he first enters the nightmare of Mensis. When a lever is pressed, a cutscene appears in which the brain is thrown down the abyss of the tower it watches. When the hunter walks outside the tower once this is done, he will not take any damage. Once the brain has been dumped, the hunter can finish it off by using a newly accessible cage elevator in the Panopticon to reach a dark abyss. The school of Mensis uncovered an eldritch mind while exploring the the nightmare, which was lined with the holy and elusive eyes on the inside that were thought to be the secret to evolution. However, these eyes were of an unfathomably terrible nature. 
and the brain was rotten to the point that their glance would drive humans lethally insane with frenzy, even if they couldn't see it from a great distance. Despite this, the researchers decided to leave the brain of Mensis alone because it was still a truly great one. This is the only great one who isn't considered a boss. It does, in fact, respawn. Surprisingly, the brain of Mensis appeared to contain a substantial health pool. It has about 8,500 HP, thus it's nearly like a boss. Although it is entirely defenseless against the player, it only screams out in pain when it is ultimately murdered. The brain of Mensis is said to have emerged from the school of Mensis's combined brains when they projected themselves into the nightmare world. Apart from the apparent point of its physical look matching a genuine brain, this makes sense since the brain of Mensis has an intriguing detail. There are six fingers on each hand, and it has two arms. The kin, who are humans who transcend humanity, are connected with these numbers of fingers. Perhaps the entire school's sacrifice resulted in something completely devoid of humanity, and the fingers are only a reminder of its genesis. Sounds creepy, doesn't it? That's all for this one. We'll see you again in the next video. Subscribe to our channel if you are new here. Bye! Zoe! Zoe! There you are.